How about a little flapping in the dark? Oh, good afternoon, YouTube. It is uh, 3.43 now on a Friday. I'm uh, operating on, I won't say candlelight because it's LED light, but uh, it's not really that bright. I think you can see me. That's the important thing, I reckon. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'll, if I think about it, I'll put up the uh, text I got from Duke Energy as to why we have no electricity. Um, <laughs> had big plans today. I was going to do this and going to do that. You know how that works. Uh, I went out to the garage, was going to make a, bu a Buick video. In fact, I started the car and and was trying to get you an idea, a better idea of how it sounded. Um, that didn't work. Apparently the uh, Olympus decided not to record when I hit the record button. Not really sure why. I do know that the it stayed on until it ran the battery down, so I don't know what it was doing. Um, who knows? Uh, when I got back into the house, this is before the electric went off, I was lucky I went ahead and closed the garage door and uh, so I was cleaning off the back of the Buick and like I said that's what I was in the middle of it when the, the camera went off because I thought well it recorded quite a while and I thought you know it just you know done done its due and that was it so when I brought it back into the house to, to uh, hook it up to the computer it said there was nothing there on the uh, memory card so <laughs> So much for that. That didn't work. I even took the cord out thinking maybe there was a problem with the cable, but it wasn't. There was nothing on that cord. I mean, the, the uh, usual uh, folders were there, uh, the DCIM and, uh, you know, things like that. Those folders were there, but there was no uh, data file, no uh, video file, no nothing. So, not sure what happened. So, uh, while I had it... Uh, in the camera, I went ahead and charged up the battery enough to reformat the card. I thought maybe that was the problem with it, so that's been done. And while I was recharging the battery and the camera, the power went out. <laughs> so that's as far as I got on that. So I did find another thing that was interesting. I have another Olympus camera, this one right here. I think you can see that. It's an, uh, I believe it's an 8,000 something. I don't remember the exact uh, F. Let's see, F. FE20. FE20 is what the model number is. Oh, now, now, this is just a standard definition camera. It's not a, a high def or a widescreen or anything like that. But I, I checked, I thought, well, I'm going to check the battery. It's the same exact battery that's used in the Tough camera. So I went ahead and, and uh, charged that up, and I thought, well, you know, while I didn't have any electricity, I thought, well, what I'll do is use this little device. Uh, you guys may recall I bought this some time ago, and haven't really used it that much, but using it today, in fact, that's what I'm doing now is charging up my phone. So <laughs> uh, I did use my tablet earlier to watch some videos, which worked out just fine. Uh, I used my phone, internet because obviously the uh, home internet doesn't work with no electricity. And so that's what I did there. But I was really kind of disappointed that the uh, video didn't take... I'm going to repeat the video, but of course it won't be exactly the same. Uh, I've already cleaned most of the stuff off the back of the trunk of the Buick. And uh, like I said, uh, I, I was playing around with a stereo out there. I thought it was missing a channel, but turns out that works. Um, just stating some things that I'm, gonna, I'm planning on doing out there. Uh, I'm going to put that uh, air compressor in the spot next to the toolbox and move the stuff that's there somewhere else. Who knows where? Because I don't have a lot of room. But I will have a lot of room once I get rid of the day bed or day day bed, whatever they call it, day bed. And that will take a lot of stuff out. Plus, I have. That cooler in there that belongs to my grandson. I'm going to make him, make him take that with him as well. And there's a tire there I think belongs to him, if I'm not mistaken. So all of those things are going to be leaving. And that will leave that uh, rack that I used to use for the stereo 
that will be um, taken apart probably um, not sure exactly what else I would do with it, uh, it just, but once it's taken apart it will fit you know it may it'd be a lot more com compact and that's that and uh, there's a couple other things there that can go uh, boxes things like that can go out uh, so I will make some room and uh, once I do that I need to find that, uh, that weather stripping I was looking at the uh, price of uh, uh, the 3M weather strip adhesive last night and seems like the yellow is cheaper than the black uh, I did some research. <laughs> Believe it or not, the yellow is supposed to be the the better of the two for this purpose. You know, I think everybody likes the black because it weather strip is black. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of, and that's that's the reason I bought it when I bought it before. Um, so you know, I, but for this window, I I see no reason to to pay two dollars more a tube for. Uh, the black when the yellow is not going to show I mean it's inside that track it's not going to show so I don't think I'll even mess with that uh, I think I'll just get the yellow and, and be done with it I may get a tube of each I don't know just in case I need something that where you know it shows a little bit or something like that I don't know we'll see but they're five ounce tubes they run around 11 to 13 dollars depending on black or yellow uh, so you know, I'm trying to keep the cost down best I can, as you always do, or I do anyway, uh, when I'm doing stuff like that. Um, so that's that. Uh, I got another radio in the mail today. Uh, I will flash some pictures up of that. I bought this radio basically for um, parts I needed for my sport mate that I got uh, some time ago. You may recall the Sportmate was the same one Bill, old 64 Goat had and sent to Greg of Greg's uh, Vintage uh, Workshop. Greg's Vintage Workshop? I, I can't remember. I don't, have the, I don't have anything in front of me. I have a terrible memory for stuff like that. Whatever it was, uh, Greg, is, you know, he does the re restoration, um, radio restorations and stuff like that. But like I said, he did the uh, uh, repair of that and uh, got it working rather nice. Uh, mine was missing a um, battery cover and did not have a case. Now, this one I bought had both. So, I will have those things, and uh, that will make mine complete. I just need to change caps in it, things like that, and get that all done. And that should be a fairly good radio then, I think. There is one strap that's broke, but, you know, I can replace the strap pretty easy. So, uh, that's that. Uh, like I say, once I get some power back, I'll show you the actual radio, but <laughs> until then, I'm just kind of working by the moonlight or the candlelight, whatever. Um, so that's that. Um, I did move the car a little bit just to make sure it was moving when I had it started, and it does move, it does stop, and there's no problem with that. Um, I did some research again online on the Indiana uh, Bureau of Motor Vehicles and was trying to uh, establish if it was cheaper or not to buy a historic plate and it's not they are the exact same cost as the um, ones you get for any other car um, the only difference is they stay a historic vehicle on them you know that's whoop to do <laughs> I, I see no reason to buy those to tell you the truth now there's other states that have a lot better deals for old cars like that but Indiana is just not one of them. Uh, so uh, I think they did, uh, they have uh, come down a little bit because used to, uh, I know when I first got the Buick, I was going to get the historic plate for it. And it was actually more to buy the historic plate than it was just to buy a regular plate for it. Well, you know, why would you buy that just because it says historic vehicle? That doesn't make any sense. So uh, I just, like I said, I've always bought the regular plate for it. Uh, I did check my account on BMV and to see there is no listing of the Buick there now. It's just the uh, Toyota is the only thing on there, which is kind of surprising to me because uh, uh, the Cavalier, I don't recall taking that off. And uh, the only thing I can assume is whoever bought it did actually register it in their name. And that's why it's no longer on mine. I'm guessing. So, so that's good. I'm, I'm happy about that because you don't want, you know, cars running around that were, you, you know, were formally registered to you in case something happens. But uh, uh, that's that. Um, 
I think that's about it. Just wanted to make a little video because I was bored sitting there doing nothing. And I was watching videos on the on the tablet, but like I said, you know, it's just boring. Um, I want to maybe if the power comes on, according to the text, they say six o'clock, but of course that's what they always say. I mean, they, it's always a generalized, uh, you know, account of, of what they when they think it'll be back on. Usually it's before that. But so far, no no go on the power, I guess. I'll turn the power on. It didn't come on, so apparently it's not working. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's uh, going to do me, I think. You guys uh, have a great day. <laughs> I, I, oh, that's the other thing. I had the battery uh, for the Toyota, the Rule King battery, on the trunk of the, the, the uh, Buick charging when I left, you know, quit... Uh, after I'd made the video and went back in the house, I left it on the trunk charging, and it was charging just like the battery for the uh, uh, Buick did, uh, basically the same thing. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll go ahead and let that charge through and be on float, and then it'll be ready to go tomorrow when I switch the battery in Toyota. That's what I'm planning on doing. I wanted to do it at a time where the car wasn't going to be needed in case something goes wrong. You never can tell. And I just like to be prepared on things like that. This way, I don't have to pick up Lexi. Um, she'll be, you know, she don't work, doesn't work on the weekends. So, um, so gonna do that tomorrow. I'll probably, probably uh, video that. I keep wanting to say film, and it's not really film, is it? <laughs> uh, but that's uh, that's gonna do me. That's uh, like I say, that's about it. Uh, once I get this all done. I think I'm going to, like I said, clean some stuff up in the garage, make a little bit more room, and try to make move that compressor where I want to put it. And I've got those things I bought at Harbor Freight to hang hoses on, and I, I'll just have to find them. Of course, they're here somewhere. Who knows where? But I bought three of those for in here, and I'm not, you know, I can't see a good use for them in here, so they will be useful out there in the garage, though. So, going to do that. So I see my battery is down one one button one one light it has four lights on it and it's down to three now so that is okay still though it's still charging so like i said once the power comes on i'll, I'll just stick to reverse the ends and charge that back up so you guys have a great day thank you so so much for watching and we will see you